Good morning. So today in this video I'm gonna go to Montreal. I'm now in our building in Maceo and uh, I'm gonna go to the airport. We're just waiting for the driver to come. So today's mission is to go to Maceo airport. From Maceo I'm gonna fly to Sao Paulo and then I have like four or five hours of layover and then from there Sao Paulo to Montreal and uh, I'm gonna show you the Sao Paulo airport this is the plan I don't know how it's gonna uh, work out because even now uh, we are waiting for the driver so we don't know if he's gonna be right on time or he's gonna take his time uh, but when I go there I'm gonna show you the airport in Maceo and also the airport in Sao Paulo and the trip to Montreal. So let's go. All right, so made it to the airport checked in all good got my boarding pass and everything and now I'm just gonna go through security to get ready for my next flight for Sao Paulo um, I couldn't give you more uh, details before I'm just going for a few days because I have some paperwork to do I have to I think um, two. I have two major missions one is to renew my driver's license canadian driver's license and also to try to see if i can renew my passport because my passport is almost uh, expired i have a few months left but i have to renew it anyway so if i can do it there in like a couple of days just like uh, express then uh, i'll do it mariana is gonna stay here in uh, in Maceo because we have our dog and uh, so far we didn't find anybody that could take care of him and it's just a few days so I'm going and then I come back the Maceo airport just to show you very simple I was actually lucky these people here are with another airline those three counters at the end are the, uh, for the airline that I'm flying with and it was almost empty so very quick very very nice and relaxed check-in and the adventure continues okay had to get myself a coffee because for some weird reason in Brazil public places like airport shopping mall restaurants everything is freezing outside it's very hot but inside uh, it's always very cold so in the car that I uh, took to come here to the airport the AC was on also and I was freezing and then I come to the airport the terminal is freezing so I had to get a coffee because otherwise I don't think I can make it um, and I'm wearing shorts because I thought it would be hot but then uh, I have my jeans in my carry-on I think I'm gonna go and change because I don't think I have it in me guys um, another note to also explain to you the transfer to the airport was 110 reais and uh, this was like a private uh, transfer they, the driver came picked me up at, the, at our place and uh, brought me to the airport um, you can find other forms of uh, transfer also here in Maceo uh, but uh, for us it was the best option because I could also take Uber but Uber in in Brazil most of the time they're very small cars and I had three large um, suitcases so it wasn't gonna work with Uber and taxi also it would be a bit uh, maybe risky so we want to just make sure that my transfer is ready and everything is good so that was the price and um, I'm just gonna have my coffee and go through security so I went through security and now I'm at the gate 
The time is 9.45 and my flight is at 12.15. So two hours and a half I have to wait. I think I'm a bit early. <laughs> Look at the terminal. Actually, this is my gate. That's where the gate is. And as you can see, there is nobody. People are starting to come. So two hours and a half wait time and then Sao Paulo. Okay, welcome to Sao Paulo. I just got here and uh, it's crazy. I'm just going to show you guys. So, it is Sao Paulo, of course, obviously. Um, our flight from uh, Maceo uh, was delayed a little bit, like 30 minutes. But then I think the, the pilot made it up and we got here only 15 minutes after the original arrival time. Now, this is the, the bigger airport at uh, Sao Paulo that I'm here. Usually, I think um, domestic flights are in Terminal 1 and 2 and my next flight to Canada is an international one so I have to go to Terminal 3 to take my next flight but I have, I think, 4 or 5 hours so if the security and other people don't make a big fuss about me filming the terminal I'm gonna try to show you guys also the terminal as I'm walking to go to Terminal 3. what I read uh, from terminal 2 to terminal 3 by walking it should be around uh, 10 to 15 minutes so it shouldn't be that bad actually after that flight that I was sitting for like three hours so I don't mind actually going there and this is another thing I just saw it's very interesting there is Turkish coffee at the airport of Sao Paulo and they have all the goodies, baklava and all the gifts and everything else. Beautiful. Wow. Okay, let's continue. Okay, I think here I have to go to security again just to pass my boarding pass. And so I'm gonna stop filming. And I'll see you guys later. After here, I have to also see where I'm gonna stay for four or five hours because I'm, I'm trying to get to a lounge. I don't know which one is open at this time, but first, let's go through the first uh, security check. Okay, officially in Terminal 3. I went through another security and uh, customs also. So, all good. I am free to legally leave Brazil and now I'm gonna go to Terminal 3 and find a lounge where I can finally relax. Oh and I haven't had anything since this morning so I need to grab a bite somewhere. Let's see. Ooh. This could be good. Let's go. Alright guys. While I'm walking to the other terminal and now it's less crowded, I can actually talk, probably you guys can actually hear me. Please tell me, is it me or everybody else also freezes when they travel? This morning in the car to go to the airport, I was freezing. At the airport, I was freezing. On the plane, I was freezing. And now again in Sao Paulo at the airport, it's like a freaking fridge. It's not comfortable, it's cold, but please, 
let me know in the comments if you guys also freeze usually at the airport or when you fly or it's just me found the lounges but I don't know which one to take there is W Visa there is Amex up there W Premium Lounge and let's see first American Express if we can go in boarding starts at least like an hour before because it's a big uh, flight tonight and then it's gonna be another long flight uh, my flight is direct from Sao Paulo to Montreal it's I think 10 or 11 hours so it's gonna be a long flight I'm gonna stay here enjoy it to the most and I'm actually surprised it's empty every time we would come it was full today there is nobody maybe since most uh, most flights are later it's gonna get packed a bit after but uh, as of now not bad all good no complaints okay so when i walked in first i didn't actually even go around to show the lounge properly and i just realized that they even have like rooms privacy study and use the computer and then another one is this area that they they call it a beach area inside the lounge so let's go check this out oh my god this is nice that's a nice touch because inside you can come here Relax, lie down, their beds, comfortable chairs. Oh my god, this is amazing. I have not seen this. A very nice touch. And they're all available. Like, this is very nice. Today, I'm happy that it's not that busy. Seat. Sit there and uh, let's see if I can grab something else. Okay, confession. Couldn't resist. Went for the second round. It's too good. And I have four hours to kill. a little bit lucky because when I came the lounge was empty and look at it now there are very few empty seats but the rest is all packed it's a good thing I'm leaving <laughs> I'm gonna go find my gate and start boarding because they got because I think soon they're gonna open the gate to start boarding. 
going to show you also this is another um, lounge I don't know if I could go to that or not but mine is fine and this is the terminal 3 of Sao Paulo airport let's head down I just realized I, all of a sudden I, I, I got so tired and then I realized well it is like almost uh, 7 p.m. and I got up at 6 a.m. this morning so almost 12 hours 13 hours of preparation <laughs> for my next flight which is going to be between 10 to 11 hours I think 10 hours 40 minutes something like that um, so that's why I was tired but it was good uh, in the lounge they had a uh, very good coffee so good to go ready to get on the plane and hopefully I can sleep overnight a little bit and get ready for the adventure in Montreal a little bit of uh, difference for the gate I checked the Air Canada app and it says gate 325 but uh, at the terminal it's saying that it's gate 326 so I'm just gonna walk there and see which one is true which one is the right one imagine if it was like 100 gates difference like 325 and 225 <laughs> that would be really hard to figure out but this one is just one either 325 or 326 not a big deal let's see uh -huh. three ah, it's actually both right there so 325 and 326 for Montreal I think it's a big plane and most probably it's gonna be full so I'm at the gate all good also the plane is here waiting for us I hope they're putting all the goodies and food and all the chocolate and cake and everything I'm ready half of the fun of traveling is eating on board isn't it this is actually I'm, I'm curious write in the comments I want to know am I the only child <laughs> that like uh, every time I fly every time I go somewhere I'm actually more excited about the food than the flight itself and especially of course if it's comfortable even more but if it's economic class and they don't serve anything for like hours and with my long legs there's no comfort in the seat either that sucks hopefully this plane is gonna be fun thanks have a nice Thank trip you. sir
welcome to Montreal. It is 6 a.m., well, a bit after 6 a.m., and the terminal is empty. It's the first time. And uh, as usual, Morphe's Law. I have to stay at the terminal until 9.30 because um, they're bringing a car for me. After I go through the exit, I'll explain how it works. Uh, but now that I have to stay here for almost three hours, there's nobody. Uh, basically, customs, I was the second person because I think they open at 6 a.m. And uh, there is another funny thing also about that. Uh, the captain told us uh, when we were on the plane that we were actually ahead of schedule and we could arrive uh, before 6, like 15 minutes before 6. But Canada being Canada, regulations don't allow the planes to land before 6 a.m. So we had to actually go around two, three times and uh, until it's 6 a.m. and then he could land or as he put it the rubber touches the ground uh, so go figure regulations and uh, they're worried about the environment but a big 787 Boeing had to go around like uh, for 15 minutes until it's 6 o'clock and then it was allowed to land but anyway you gotta love Canada uh, but everything else is fine, everything worked out. So I'm just waiting for the luggage and I will have to kill a bit more time after I get up. But there's other things too uh, that once I'm out, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. Okay, so picked up the luggage and went through customs, everything fine. Um, now I wanted to buy prepaid SIM cards uh, the only problem is the SIM cards that they sell at the terminal they are all for monthly plans and I don't want a monthly plan I have a monthly plan uh, with the old plan that we have but I don't have that much data with that so I went to the machines and every SIM card that you find it's for a monthly plan which I don't want um, another thing I told you I'll explain later is about the, the car that I'm getting. Uh, it's not a promotion or anything, I'm not uh, promoting them. But just for you guys to know, I'm using the, the app, it's called Turo. Turo, basically, it's like Airbnb, but for cars. And um, the good thing is you, you don't deal with car companies that you come to the you know you come to the airport you have to stand in line you it takes a long time to even finally get a car and you never know what car you're gonna end up with two row no before you book it's like Airbnb you see the pictures you choose exactly the car that you want and you deal directly with the owners I think these people that I'm uh, renting from today they have a company and they have a few cars and they rent it, it's their business. I tried this last year also when I went to California to visit my parents. It's very good, it was very reliable. And like for example, now I'm at the airport, you can choose that you wanna pick up the car at the airport. So they bring the car for you to the airport. And then when I'm leaving also, I'm gonna come here with the luggage and just leave the car here or meet with them and go it's very convenient uh, and you know exactly what car you're getting how much you're going to get charged before even like booking everything is in the app and then you can choose another uh, good thing is just like airbnb that you get uh, reviews for hosts Turo also uh, it has reviews from people that have uh, rented cars from the owners so you can from that also you can know the owners um, car insurance also through the app you can uh, you can choose what uh, coverage you want you want just the standard coverage or you want a full full coverage it gives you the options of course prices are different but before you get everything is clear I was happy with my uh, previous rental uh, in California so I hope this one is also fine 
And now I wanted to show you guys this. Uh, you know, in the US, wherever you go, uh, the, on the corner of every, every street, there is a Starbucks. In Canada, we, we do have Starbucks, but recently I think actually a lot of them closed. But the equivalent of Starbucks in Canada is this coffee shop that I'm gonna show you. This one, basically every, every block you can have this coffee shop. And uh, uh, even if you go to like a very, very little tiny town, they all have this. It is called Tim Hortons. And as you can see, it's always busy. Um, this is definitely cheaper than Starbucks. And uh, they have breakfast sandwiches too, they have lunch, they have wraps, they have everything. And Mariana always jokes, well, compared to Brazilian coffee, she says the coffee at Tim Hortons, it tastes like dirty water. But, uh, I just wanted to show you guys this too, that this is the equivalent of Starbucks, but in Canada. And I am actually going to get a coffee from here. It's been almost a year. I didn't uh, go to Tim Hortons, so I'm gonna go get my coffee. So now I'm just waiting for them to bring the car. As you might possibly see from my face, I'm exhausted. So I'm just waiting for them uh, to bring the car. It's gonna be another hour or so. So I'm gonna finish this video here. And in the next one, we continue with the rest of the adventure in Montreal. I'm here only for a few days, but I'm gonna try to show you as much as possible, at least the main tourist attractions that I can show you. And if there's anything else happening, that is interesting so if you like this one give us a like to support us and uh, during the video I asked for a few uh, comments also to make uh, let me know about those also and if you have any other questions about the route that I took to get here uh, leave us comments and we'll get back to you until the next one